What would Maui Powder Works look like all grown up? It's hero worship time here on the podcast. Today, we're featuring Andrew's Powder Coating out of Los Angeles, California. They are what I would call a powder coater's powder coater. Sandy Andrews, CFO and Strategic Director of Andrews, joins me on the show to discuss how they went from a pea-sized job shop to a powerhouse powder coating company filling the skyline of New York City. It's a rags-to-riches story as she shares their personal and professional journey through exemplary finishing and certifications. Lots of certifications. If they can, so can you. Get ready to level up your powder coater game. Well, welcome to the Powder Coder Podcast. I am so super stoked to have a person that's been on my hit list (laughs) for a while. Uh, This is Sandy Andrews. She is the CFO and Strategic Director for uh, of Operations at Andrews Powder Coating um, in Los Angeles, California. And I have to admit, I've got some hero worship going on for uh, my little, I'm going to give you my little heart emoji (laughs) because, um, you know, I have, uh, I have been watching you guys for so long and I love what you guys do. You are a powder coaters, powder coater. You know what I mean? Like if my little business could grow up and be a powder, you know, a real powder coating company someday, it would be it would be that. So I just want to uh, say welcome to the show, and I'm just you know worshiping the ground you guys because you have really just pushed through so many boundaries and stuff. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I am blushing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, today we're going to talk about specialty coatings or specialty certifications within the realm of powder coating. Um, You pretty much have checked off that list of pretty much almost all of them. Um, I want to ask you kind of out of the gate, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but in today's topic about certifications and what they are, we're just going to stay baseline. But all the time when I start planning a podcast and stuff, I always ask myself, what does, what's it, what's in it for the listener? Like what, what's so important about certification or getting certified in powder coatings, whether it's ISO 9000 or military, you know, AAMA, PCI 3000, 4000. We're going to talk about all of that, but why is this so important? We think that it creates a, a different barrier um, for our quality management systems versus powder coaters that are, for example, doing motorcycle parts and car rims all the time. So we really needed to differentiate ourselves because we're not in Maui. (laughs) So we're in Los Angeles, California. So we're one of the, the biggest metropolises in the world. And there is tons of competition here. So if we wanted to base our company on motorcycle parts and car parts, we discovered that we're, you know, we're suddenly everybody's in a bidding war and nobody's making any money. And it, it just depresses the entire industry, which is what we experienced. So we knew um, decades ago that we needed to do something else to differentiate ourselves and start climbing into different specialty coatings. And that's what it was for us. We wanted to survive. We wanted to give our employees a career opportunity instead of, you know, something that lasts five or six years and then goes away like much of our competitors 
did do. Yeah. And um, we've been really happy that we made that move as uncomfortable as the growing pains were. And they <laughs> honestly were uncomfortable, but we're glad we did it. And we've been able to hold on to our team through all of that process. And they've, they've walked right beside us every step of the way. So that's um, awesome. It's, really, it's so good. Yeah. I mean, you know, for our paths crossed, I mean, I, well, let me back it up just a minute because like, you know, you can only do so many car parts or motorcycle parts. Right. And then after a while, it just becomes, uh, you know, the same old, same old. Right. So I appreciate and admire your challenge. You're challenging yourselves to kind of take it to the next level, not just from a marketing or a marketplace differentiator, but, you know, because of, you know, just the fact that you're growing, right. And you're continuing to grow. And I think that's what I admire you the most. And I was thinking last night, like when I first saw, I think the first time I saw you guys in the marketplace, um, Ross is rolling up the door. So just hang bear with me, the, bear with the noise. He just came in. Um, you know, I saw you in powder coating tough magazine and it was like, Wow. Centerfold. <laughs> that was a while ago. It was. And yeah. you were featured as being different in because you were doing aerospace. And I'm thinking that is just too wild to be able to see powder coatings in aerospace. You know, I, I've seen paint coatings in aerospace, but powder coatings just seemed, you know, and that's pretty much what the article was about, as I recall. You know, and that's when the hero worship kind of came in going, wow, that's amazing. You guys are just pushing that pushing that level and you're getting scientists involved in codings, right? You know? Yep. So that yeah. was, yeah, that's what really kind of brought me to pay attention to you guys a little bit more and, you know, be, be excited for you in pushing the industry further. So, uh, that was kind of, you know, okay. But, um, you know, today our paths crossed actually recently um, because I'm dealing with this contractor. I brought it up on the show before about how to explain what it is when they want this type of powder, which is a 2605. And it the sample they brought in was your sample because it said <laughs> answer is powder coating. And I'm like, I know these guys. <laughs> and then I picked up the phone and called you. And that's how we kind of became uh, BFFs on, uh, over this project, you know, and, and stuff. So I'm happy. And it was like, I was struggling with this guy trying to explain what it is, but then at the same time, I don't know a hundred percent of what it is either. And that's why I think that was the impetus for the show to kind of talk about there are 2605 powders, but there are also, there's a process behind that powder. Yes. So I'm going to try to make this brief and, and not get into too much tech here, but an AMA 2605 certified powder can only be applied by an AMA 2605 certified applicator. And the reason for that is these powders are, they're supercharged powders. I mean, they're very superior powders and the manufacturers offer, depending on the manufacturer who they are, they'll offer 15 to 30 year warranties on their AMA 2605 compliant powders, but only if they're applied by an AMA 2605 certified applicator. The reason you have to be certified is because these powder manufacturers are some of the biggest chemical manufacturers in the world. I mean, we have Axon Nobel, Sherwin Williams, PPG. Yeah. They yeah. have big pockets. So the people building houses in McKenna also have big pockets. And if something goes wrong, there's going to be a lot of legal going back and forth, which is yeah. which is going to affect a lot of people financially. The powder manufacturers do not want to be affected in a way 
that would make them vulnerable by allowing somebody that's not certified to apply these powders to just willy nilly apply them and hope for the best. They've got to know that that applicator knows what they're doing and has taken the right. proper process right. steps to do it. And the recertifications are every year. Um, Axo Nobel specifically being the most challenging to recertify. And that's what the Fenestration Glazing Industry Alliance, FGIA, yeah. really bases their bar on is Axo Nobel's certification process. Because what they ask us to do is uh, every year, once a year, it's in August for them, I believe, they um, ask us to pre treat eight aluminum panels. Yep. And um, put through our five stage pre treatment system and then powder coat with a 2605 powder. So we do that eight panels for six weeks in a row because Axon Nobel is testing the consistency from yeah. week, one, week six and they want to make sure everything is the same. And if it's not, you don't get your certification. So it's a big deal. And all the other manufacturers, follow suit. So um, that's why it's so difficult to get and maintain. So you're saying that it's not just you have to do this for Axel Nobel. You're saying you have to do this for all of them, right? Every manufacturer. Every single one, because you don't know who's going to specify that next project. So you have to stay current. Correct. So Kim, forgive me for a second, yeah. because my my lighting is on auto light. Oh, <laughs> and if somebody is is still for a while, oh. the light's still out. <laughs> well, when so, you raise your hand, you're not asking a question. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we're into energy conservation here. That's awesome. Um, but that's how we do it. You know, the yeah. lights go out by themselves. <laughs> that's fine. Um, yeah, and could you for it's, it, we could go in so many different directions, and I know we'll be bouncing around, but my next question to you is in regards to AMA and FGIA, I'm a little confused about this. What is this? They're coming together as one, right? They came together on January 1st of 2020, and, um, and, and they got married. <laughs> So, <laughs> and the end. <laughs> yeah, the end. So um, it's been a, a happy, a happy marriage. Um, yeah, that's what happened. So AMA is the American Architectural Manufacturing Association, and they wanted to be more than just the American. They they wanted to start spreading this globally. Oh, so okay. even though in Europe they don't produce. 2605 compliant patterns. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've heard because they don't have a giant ozone hole above their heads in Europe. And so they're not subjected to the same UV issues that were subjected oh, to interesting. Over here. Right. So I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I, you know? yeah. <laughs> We've been kind of, you know, because we're trying to get launched in uh, Europe with some of our finishes. Um, they have Qualicoat. Yes. One, and we, two. We test the Qualicoat standards as well because we want to be on a global platform as well. Right. I mean, you just completed a project in New York, right? Yes. We completed the Spiral, which is a stunning masterpiece of I want to bring that out. Paper. Yeah. It's a 66-story. If I Google it, will it come up? Spiral. Yeah, this, it's at the spiral.com. Oh, okay. The so spiral? It, the spiral, correct. Okay, dot com. Oh, well, here's, yeah. Oh, it's a, okay. Oh, my gosh. This thing is, oh, okay. It's got like a, like a wreath spiral. around it or something. Yep, a spiral. So it's at 66 Hudson Yards, and this is a Tishman Meyer um, project. I'm going to share my screen. Permastilisa was the um, fenestration uh, vendor on it, and they contracted with the Troxa Windows, and, 
And so we do um, the Troxy USA is represented by Goldbrecht and we do all of their finishing. And My so goodness. every every single aluminum extrusion that holds all of those windows in mm-hmm. has come through our shop. And we, That's amazing. It's really cool. We formulated uh, a powder for them that we, um, through Tiger Dry Lac, it's a 75 series and it's called Spiral Silver. So it's a, it's a unique uh, custom color and it's, it's a cool building and we're really proud of it. That is. Wow. I mean, that's amazing to, uh, you know, to even just be a part of, you know, something so much greater than yourselves. You know what I mean? Yes. I can't imagine what the feeling is. I mean, what a, what a sense of accomplishment, um, and, you know, you, you see all this stuff like Tiger and, you know, all, all of them do. They, they'll, they'll put pictures in their brochures of these big, massive buildings and stuff and, and everything. But, like, you never hear about the powder coater, you know, that did yeah. all the work, right? We got to change that narrative. Uh, <laughs> hopefully well, we will. Well, um, it's funny you say that because I've had some conversations uh, specifically with Tiger uh, because they're – social media marketing is pretty great. And um, I've let them know that, hey, you know, when we do cross pollination, I'm always the first person to hashtag Tiger Dry Lack and the first person yeah. to um, to name them in my post and, and as an applicator and somebody that's approved not only for Alma 2605 through them, but CARC coatings, which is yeah. a chemical agent resistant coatings, um, we want them to recognize their finishers that have had to <laughs> jump through the hoops to get to where they're at. Yeah, exactly. So they have cross pollinated, and um, and I appreciate that those efforts for sure because the more they cross pollinate us, the more we can sell their powders, and everybody benefits. Yeah, I uh, it, it started off okay with me in their marketing department. Uh, but it's it it quickly <laughs> it quickly went off of a cliff. Um, but I know that there was one particular person that's no longer there. That you know, it it, it seems like they've kind of turned around uh, a little bit for at least on the custom coder side. They seem to you know the bespoke small guys. They seem to be supporting a little bit more. Um, I don't want to go there. Uh, right now, but, um, (laughs) I'm glad that they are starting to recognize, uh, at least in some way, shape or form, they're starting to recognize what they're, you know, what they're doing. Um, and, 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 and that we only hope the best for them. Maybe they'll all come in tow at some point. Um, let's get into what a, you know, so there's three different ones. There's 2605, then it goes 2604, 2603. I believe 2603 is a, like what you would call a decorative powder. So it can pretty much be indoors or outdoors, but it doesn't, it, it's a, it's got a, oh, that's what I wanted to pull up is the, I have a little chart on my website that kind of talks about those different, very, the differences between the three. Okay. Let me bring that up. But go ahead and start talking, and then I'll just bring it up. So Alma 2603, which is the only, it wasn't called Alma 2603 when we started this business. They were just called regular polyesters. Mm -hmm. Um, Those were like the RAL colors that we all just used to spray um, all the time. Normal polyesters that had decent outdoor life. Um, for exposure, but um, nothing superior. And it was acceptable for, you know, even here in California for outdoor furniture and outdoor application. Although everything I'm reading now about Alma 2603 compliant coatings, they're suggesting that these are interior only coatings. But I know from um, longevity and experience that Most of the 2603 compliant finishes are acceptable and fine for outdoor. That said, the 2604 super durable resins that have now been added, 
we have moved away from 2603 coatings and spray at least a 2604 almost exclusively because the cost difference is so nominal and to give our clients something way superior for just a little bit more money just yeah. made better sense. Yeah, that's pretty much where we're at too. Um, unless they're specifically asking for like, you know, some special, you know, to candy or something like that, you know. Uh, but even if it's rims and stuff, we we just really want to offer that too, you know. Sure. Um, yep. Just for our own, just so we can sleep at night. <laughs> you know what I mean? There is that yeah. level it's of very it, right? Helpful when your client doesn't come back to you in six months or a year and tells mm -hmm. you that their coating is faded or you know some other color characteristic has gone away, you know if you can for ten more dollars for you know a five pound mini pack, for example, you can apply a superior powder, then of course, please do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. For your own sake, right? Um, yeah, I think that's great. Um we pretty much do it. Like I said, we do it exclusively. We have, I'll tell you this, this is kind of an interesting situation I wanted to talk about because back in 2000, I think 18 or 19, we were brought in to do a resort um, exterior facade, and they had specified a 2605 finish. And this was the first time we kind of had ever been asked about this color. And I'm like, why did they pick that? Well, the you know, like you go back in time and it's the architect or the designer or the project manager, you know, whoever made the call. But what was funny is there isn't anybody here that can do that. But then it was getting fabricated by a, a local fabricator on the island, not here, but on the big island. And I'm thinking, why did you even allow this to happen? Did you not even know that they wanted 2605? Both powders were 2605 because it was like a, it had like a two-tone effect, right? And this is a, like, I'm, just, I'm not going to say who it is. It's on our website, the picture of the building. Um, it is, tr you know, it's a name that everybody would know. Okay. Um, and, you know, that was my first introduction to 2605. And I'm thinking, what is, you know, I'm trying to unravel what the difference is. We were just starting to start to use 2604 finishes and stuff uh, and learn about them. But we had no clue what that was. And by that time, the powder had already been ordered. Uh we pretty much just followed the directions, even though we knew, you know, and I kind of had to get into like an email thing back and forth because I didn't want to be put on the hook for the warranties, right? Because that's what I was looking at was, okay, it's exterior, but not the process that goes along with that. And they need to understand that. So uh, I'm hoping it's still looking good today, but... You know, sometimes you're just out in the weeds with this stuff, you know, and I guess that's kind of what brought me to have you on the show, because people need to understand that there are, there is a, I guess, a chain, uh, a, cust a chain of custody. There is, you know, uh, warranties that need to be provided. Can you walk around that a little bit? Yes. Um the manufacturers, so one of the reasons we moved into the building we're in now is because when we first started to do architectural coatings and, and dive into the AMA 2605 realm, we were in a, a building that was quite a bit smaller than the one we're in right now. And we did not have our own pretreatment facility in-house. And the manufacturers want the finisher to have, like you said, care and custody of the entire process. So we did have one manufacturer that allowed us for a small amount of time 
to use an approved outside vendor to do all of the pretreatment for the extrusion before bringing it into our shop and coating it. But they only allowed that for a period of a couple of years, which allowed us time to source another building, get permits, um, <laughs> arrange logistics to get all of our equipment moved, which I know you can imagine even in your shop is it's a giant project to do. Yeah. yeah. So we moved into this building and we installed a five stage pretreatment system. But we did it a little bit differently than most of the people in the country at that time. So this was late 2017. And uh, we're very, we pay a lot of attention to what's going on in metal finishings up in the California legislation and what they allow and what they disallow. And chromate is one of those items that is very, it's not environmentally friendly. And we knew that if we were going to invest the amount of money that we were investing into this pretreatment system, it would not had a return on our investment before we were able to pay it off when, when the California legislation said, we're not doing chromate anymore. Right. So we went outside the box and we introduced zirconium to the process. Mm -hmm. And every single manufacturer without fail held their hands up and they're like, oh, no, we're not going to AMA certify you with zirconium. And we had to really convince them by doing tons and tons of testing in their accelerated Florida chambers and show them that zirconium not only met AMA standards, but exceeded AMA standards. And zirconium has gotten such a good reputation because it's safe for the applicator and it's it's safe for the environment and and we don't have sorry <laughs> we don't have these we don't have big chromium conversion tanks to um pollute anything but but most of all pollute our employees and expose them to um carcinogens quite frankly yeah. so we just didn't want to do that so we do zirconium and uh, everyone's happy with it um so were you like the first in the country to do that or just one of the earlier Ooh, earlier ones? I'm not going to go I'm not going to go that bold to say that because I really haven't I don't know. You don't know. Okay. But you did have to pay for all that testing in Florida and stuff, right? Uh we worked with the manufacturers. You did. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's so good. They, yeah. Kinda, that's they were all for. the manufacturers were rooting for us. There's not too many 2605 compliant finishers out here. Right. So, um, and we have a giant market. So they wanted to, they wanted to back us and they wanted it to work. So, so, right. you know, we worked together. Because they knew it was coming, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. And in and fact, it's currently in Sacramento right now. Um, and a lot of chromium houses are, uh, you know, yeah. I'm sure you read, what's going on on in LinkedIn and you in the finishing magazines that it's a big deal. And a lot of companies are struggling with the, the situation right now. And I feel bad for them, but I'm just so happy that we took that <laughs> advanced Le step and took yeah. a chance. Yeah. I mean, because not only are you facing something that was never been done or, you know, an early adopter to this zirconium, you're, you're also having to work, with California within their system and they're already kind of just so, you know, everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, but challenging is the word. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't want to say bad words, but um, yeah, I, it's just, I don't know what it is about California. It just has to be California, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But um I mean, that that's to me, you know, you know, that you're able to get these aerospace jobs or these other building jobs and whether they're across the country or in California, you know, how, how you've managed to navigate that complicated system politically and economically. Right. You know, um, it's a huge 
that's a whole nother facet to what you've accomplished, I guess. And that's why I just admire you guys. So um, let's get into, do you happen to know how many 2605 finishers there are by any chance? I mean, I, I know it's off the cuff kind of question, but. I don't know. I know it is not very many and many of the 2605 compliant finishers that were 2605 certified last year are not certified this year. Hmm. And it happens every year where more and more 2605 compliant finishers fall off of the, off the list because they're not performing to standards. And they're, I know of some projects that have failed and they're having some trouble right now. So, um, I don't have a, a quantity. The manufacturers are a little bit tight lipped about it. Yeah. Um, I've asked them specifically how many are in our area. And um, some manufacturers have confirmed that we're the only one in the greater LA area. Some manufacturers have confirmed for them we're the only one in, you know, the, the West. Western part of the United yeah. States, which is great. For yeah. us, so I can't get a straight answer. But these them. projects you're doing are just so huge too that they take a long time to turn, right? You know, turnover. They, they do. Yeah, they do take a long time, and and that's fine. You know, with us, um, you know, it keeps our guys busy and yeah. Because the one that we, you know, had cross paths with, they're still they just dropped some stuff. You know, we're doing all the landscaping trim out yeah. whatever kind of stuff you know they they actually invited us down to um down there to kind of take pictures and stuff they said it's coming out really nice um but you i to much to my surprise you had been working on this project since i think you said went to 2018 yes that was um in fact the mckenna project was one of our first 2605 projects. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's right. Um, Cause you said 2017 was when you were doing, getting started. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. So when I'm, when I'm in Maui in June, I would love to go let's go down there. Girl, there. girl, we're going to go have, we're going to go have lunch and we're going to go take pictures for sure. Yeah. Cause I think be they're, fun. I think they're about six months out from finishing it. Okay. and stuff so and i yeah. hear this guy is extremely he's a pretty cool guy i guess uh from oh, what oh, everybody is saying about him like he'll show up the owner of the property he'll show up with pizza on fridays and stuff like that oh yeah, well, of, we'll have to yeah. come on friday <laughs> yeah right we'll have to eat pizza with the guys um so yeah that's exciting so let's get into iso the nine thousand certifications what's all that about um that's usually like a lot of i notice a lot of powder because we don't have that certification maybe we should get into it um you know i noticed that a lot of that's the first entry level one yes so iso 9001 is a quality management system and it's abbreviated with qms for a quality management system and what it is is it it's a it's a process development control system. So let's say your painter decides to quit tomorrow morning and you need to find a new painter quickly. With a QMS in place, you can bring somebody in that doesn't necessarily know your company or your policies, but they can review the QMS and they can see what the proper policies and procedures are and learn quickly, you know, how to, how to excel at their job. Right. Okay. okay. So okay. it does it. So that's part of ISO. Another part of ISO, it's all traceability. So let's say, um, you know, you powder coated a client's rims and, you know, a year down the road, the client calls and tells you that the powder coating is flaking off. You can pull up your 
project job follow notes on mm -hmm. that project. And you can find out who your pretreatment technician was and what pretreatment materials they used. You can find out who your masking technician was and what they used, who your powder coat technician was, what batch of powder they used, what the oven cure statistics were, what the humidity was that day. Um, you can find out who QC'd the project, who packaged it, and then eventually handed it off to the client. So with control measures like that in place, you can figure out where the problem went left yeah, and yeah. do some additional training for that team of employees to um, step up your quality, quite frankly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of smiling and laughing right now because last week, um, one of the guys Ross used to ride with on the motorcycle has a Three hundred and sixty thousand dollar Ferrari. No, is it a Ferrari? Yeah. <laughs> I guess he got it at a discount or something, or but I don't know what the circumstances are. How he ended up with this car? Uh, it's stunning, and he he's not being cheap, but he can only do two rims at a time, and it was just this whole like he wanted to map. He wanted, I guess there's some parts or some uh, things about this car that are very unique to hold its value, like one of a kind kind of things or whatever. And so, um, you know, he's trying to match the powder because he, he curved his rims or something. And he's trying to match the powder or the paint to the other, you know, to the other side so that if it ever goes to auction or anybody questions the value of the car, nobody's going to know any different, right? I was thinking maybe we could do an I. <laughs> maybe we should be doing ISO. I mean, it, it's a it's an interesting question, especially when I think about uh, coders that specialize in high end cars too. I mean, that you know, you might need something like that, right? Or super high yes. end stuff. You know, um, obviously, if you're doing architectural, that's always a, a given, too. Um, we've just kind of no one's ever really asked us or we've never not qualified for a job because we didn't have the certification. But I see where it could definitely be a, a, a an in, a, a good process to bring in house if we ever wanted to go next level with it. Right. It's, it's absolutely good. And we had the, the same train of thought for so long because nobody had ever asked us for an ISO certification either. But since we have attained that, we've learned how that process actually works. And we didn't just go for ISO 9001, which is a great quality control standard. We went for the AS9100, which is one more Mm. elevation above that it's for it's aerospace qualified okay so in our case for as9100 once you're certified and you have to recertify annually by the way they put you on a system called oasis which is a a national database for government contractors like northrop grumman raytheon yeah. boeing they all can get into the oasis system and if they say, you know, if they type in who's, who's powder coating that's AS9100 certified, Andrew's powder coating will pop up. Right, right. So that's the benefit for us. We would not have seen some of these government contractors in the past because we're not on the OASIS system. Right. And not and likely how many finishers don't ever see a request for an, an ISO finish or an AS9100 finish because you're not on the platform that right. their right. buyers and QC guys are looking at. Yeah. And let's face it, that's the first thing a prime is going to do. Prime contractor is going right. to do. Um, I've not heard of, uh, and maybe you can answer this because, you know, there's a lot of government contractors. The, the, the United States government is one of the largest buyers in the world. Um, and, you know, it kind of makes a good case to be 
uh, to have these entry level certifications because of that reason alone. You know, you're just not popping up on these people's radars. Um, here we're so everybody knows us online in terms of like we're the first a website to pop up if you put in powder coating Hawaii or whatever, right? Um, and so we did get an email last week for some job on Kauai. Um, but I could see where they could find us more readily if we were in their systems and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Makes it makes for a good case for that. Um, you kind of touched on military and CARC. My experience with that was somebody reached out to us via email on some aquatic type of machinery uh, for the ocean or something. And they, the, the, when I looked up the color code, uh, it was um, something that Tiger sold or whatever. So uh, I guess the, the thing about that, from what I, this is what I understand, and you'll probably fill in the gaps is, you have to tell them what the RFQ is or whatever the code is for the per specific project for that paint color. And mm -hmm. then the, they'll help you with the certification for it. But I know there's a lot more to that they than do. meets the eye. They do. So a lot of, a lot of mill spec personnel. Um, engineers, we'll say, um, they'll come up with a drawing at their place of business and they will send it to the local powder coder. And it has a mill spec finish on it, you know, mill PRF 595, and then it calls out the color. And they'll send it to Bill's powder coating down the street. And Bill will say, oh, yeah, I can get that color. It's just a semi gloss black, but it doesn't comply with the mill spec. And Unfortunately, there's there's no enforcement, but if something were to go wrong and they found out that Bob's powder coating did the finishing and he didn't apply a finish that was on the QPL, which is the qualified product listing, not only can Bob's powder coating get fined heavily and Bob's powder coating's owner could go to jail, but the buyer for that company could also put their company in a precarious situation where they get their AS9100 stripped. And that would be devastating for a company like Boeing, for example. And I'm using them on purpose because they're having major quality problems right now from, right. you know, not doing some diligence, quite frankly. So, um, it's important that buyers for these big military projects make sure that their finishing houses are CARC certified and they're actually using powders that are on the QPL instead of calling those powder coaters and the powder coaters are calling companies that say they're selling these colors and they're not on the QPL. There is one major manufacturer who is specified on almost every military drawing that is not on the QPL. And I don't know how they got their color mm -hmm. specified nationally, but they did. And it's been very challenging for us to speak to engineering teams and let them know that that color is really actually not on the QPL and they need to change manufacturers uh, or get that manufacturer on the QPL, which is a headache for the manufacturer as well. Right, right. Yeah. I can so imagine. It, it can there, you can go down a pretty deep rabbit hole as far as all that goes. <laughs> we have gone down the rabbit hole because it's what we do. You know, I mean, do you out. sometimes do you sometimes get frustrated about it? Like, I mean, you must yeah. because you are trying so hard to be, you know, represent the industry in in a in, in the most perfect way. And then there's all these like things that just kind of, you know, we do get frustrated. The only thing um, 
that that is helping our cause, quite frankly, is what's happening with Boeing right now. Yeah. And um, now we're able to use those QC issues in our favor and say, hey, you don't want to be like this and you don't want your right. door to fall off your airplane because you're <laughs> using someone that's not putting bolts in correctly. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it just... <laughs> Um, yeah. so they're, they're ratcheting up their QC systems a little better now. And so that's going to bode well for companies that play by the rules and really know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So um, let's talk about PCI 3000, if you can. I don't know if you are PCI 3000. Do you know anything about their 3000 and 4000 um, compliancy? So PCI reached out to me and asked me if we wanted to go through their qualifying process. And um, we opted to not go for a couple of reasons. One is that it costs almost as much as getting AS9100. Mm-hmm. And two, in 42 years, we have never, ever been asked if we are PCI compliant. And it doesn't for us, I'm going to just speak personally. It, right. it wouldn't do anything for us. AS9100 is the platform that is federally recognized. And right. so we feel like that was the platform to put our time and energy into. Well, yeah, because yeah. who is actually certifying? Who is actually calling for that spec, you know, or that qualification? Some, someone at Powder Coding Institute. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Um, so let's get into, um, I'm just looking through my notes here. In terms of the paperwork, I mean, and, and I guess that's where I was kind of going and then we went off on another direction, but you know, when you're, we're trying, you know, we're SAM certified, You know, we did a show on that, I think it was episode 41 or something like that, where we talked about working through a contract and reading a contract, getting SAM certified. Um, And for those of you that don't know what SAM, it's just the contract, it's just the, the login site for you to kind of be registered within uh, the government to be recognized as either a, you know, as a contractor or subcontractor. Um, I'm going to congratulate Maui Maui Powder Works for being SAM certified because anybody that is SAM certified, anybody that can navigate the SAM website (laughs) deserves cake and ice cream every single day for the rest of their life. Here, I'll make it easy for you. I'm just going to do, here's my, here's my, here's my star. (laughs) <laughs> Yay, I love it. I mean, it's it, by don't, far. Don't the, ever the move. The platform has been the most challenging. It's been more <laughs> difficult than any other platform. And we don't know why. We don't know why. Because they hired terrible people <laughs> to do the uh, the IT and data website, <laughs> you know. And God forbid you... um you move and trying to change oh, yeah. Yeah, don't move. your location. <laughs> don't ever move. If you're SAM certified, they will never understand. <laughs> um, it literally took, I mean, I knew I was in for some kind of an uphill climb on changing the address, but I had no idea it was going to take as long as it did. I had multiple agencies that are there for help, right? Helpers that somehow have connections to these other agencies it was just a catch 22 everywhere I went. Um, and I kept getting this email from this one entity in the government that said, you can't qualify because you don't have, it was like going to the DMV, you know, and not having the insurance. Yeah. Yep. It's challenging. And it um, was, yeah. So congratulations for getting through it. Well, thank (laughs) you. And I even wrote an email to the girl and said, how how do you she goes i can't explain it <laughs> she she gave up um 
anyways, so uh, that was for my alarm for the other time period. So I guess I thought I turned that off, but I didn't. Um, so yeah, uh, it was, it was, it took way longer than it needed to. Um, and I just attended a, a seminar last week, actually, uh, a couple of weeks ago where um, they were talking, uh, they just brought in all the agents because they know how much business, I mean, there's so much government contracts going to come down the pipe here in Hawaii. I mean, we're talking like spending that has money that has never been spent before in this state, if we don't go broke in the, in the United States prior to that. Uh, but, um, it, it, you know, they're trying to get all these people kind of certified or at least on the radar for this kind of stuff, including like, um, you know, uh, disadvantaged business owners and stuff like that, women owned businesses, uh, minority owned businesses and stuff like that. And that's another whole nother, uh, section to get into, uh, Hopefully I'll have somebody on someday about it, but, um, yeah, it, it, it is a challenge in the paperwork you have to do. So that was kind of where I was going with the question was, you know, when you are having these certifications, there is a level of you know paperwork yes. that you have to do, uh, to maintain that, you know, all these certifications, you know, you have to be on it and that takes money, takes time. And it takes uh, employees, right? Yes. Yep. Labor. So the paperwork part is what has been a big challenge for a lot of people. Um, in fact, we have a friendly competitor that is nearby that sprays AS9100 compliant liquid finishes. And we've had several conversations with them and they're like, don't ever do it. I have stacks of paperwork on my desk. I can't get through it all. It's overwhelming, et cetera, et cetera. So um, along the way, when we started to go down this road, we brought in a, um, a, a, uh, a QC uh, a manager to help us get through the yeah. AS situation. And he's also a software writer. And what he's doing is he's created software for um, quality management systems so that we don't get thrown under a bunch of paperwork. And we are now arming our entire team with laptops. And there's a system that we're now on called Coda, where um, when we first get an RFQ, um, our our sales estimator goes through it and he does all of the um, all the all the forward work on it. And when that project actually shows up to the shop, all he is a touch screen. So all he does is moves it over into the um, the receiving area. And mm -hmm. so the receiving area knows that that project is coming and they come and they review the contract review really quick. Um, and then it moves into the prep shop, you know, or into production. And so it's just another touch screen and no more paperwork. So we fill it in. The employee puts their name down. Yes, I counted everything. I measured everything, you know, whatever. I've verified that the color is here. Everything is good to go. We have all the materials. I'm moving it over into production and every step of production, all they do is touch screen it over to the next, next, next step. And then when it's done, we're done. And then we have this database with this client's work in it that all my employees had to do is touch screen and mm -hmm. fill in fields on their laptop and then it's over. So and that, and that, go ahead. Go ahead. But, right. So it's good news for people that are using these platforms because it's no longer so stifling. If there are ways to get this done for a better way. But that's got to cost money. And let's get into the costs of having. <laughs> oh, my. Um, I mean, the jobs are bigger paying, right? You know, I mean, they're in the millions, you know, multi millions, maybe. But yeah. what's, you know, tell us about your journey. <sighs> um, just to get AS9100 certified. 
which included our QC consult for like a two year period of time to train our team and to walk us through and get us through our first and second audits, which were one year apart. Um, it was between 35 and 50,000 just for the service. Uh, but once we got on the Oasis platform and, and we were established, obviously it, it benefited us. To arm our team with a bunch of laptops, we found, um, you know, laptops now are, a, you know, they're a dime a dozen. We were able to buy some nice laptops for everybody for $200 a piece. So for, you know, $3,000, we can give everybody a laptop and um, get everybody going. So yes, the, the expense up front is kind of big. And again, it's another barrier to entry for some powder coders, which is another defining moment that we've been able to step away from and differentiate ourselves from, from other powder coders. So there's goods and bads, but right. you know, if you're on the Oasis platform and you just happen to get one purchase order from Raytheon or North of Grumman, for example, um, you know, you'll realize that it was all worth it. And right. Right. Yeah. But man, yeah. And I don't know how many contracts you, you know, like the process of getting the contract. Is it usually for you guys? Are you pairing with primes or are you actually the prime? I guess is what I'm going to ask you next in regards to government contracts. We are the prime, which they call tier one at this mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, there are several. Clients we have where we're tier two, so so those clients are are the tier one, and they'll sub out to us. But we still have to have all the same certifications, and it's um, it's really nice when. So for example, we had a prime contractor call us two weeks ago, and they wanted to do some work for. They had some Boeing work that they needed to have done. And they said, we called Boeing Direct and they threw your name out. So to get that kind of stature with those right. contractors was, I just, I really wanted to throw a party actually uh, to have that happen. So we are tier one. Sorry, got the light. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are tier one. It doesn't necessarily make it any easier, but, um, yeah. yeah. So in a recent interview um, with Tim uh, from his finishing surface finishing finishes and coatings. Yeah, and coatings. Yeah. Who used to be the director over at um, um, product finishing, and then he kind of launched his own uh, last uh, last few years. Um, and he does really great articles. I I do enjoy reading and he covers so many different facets of coatings, you know, not just powder coatings, but he recently interviewed you and I watched this and you talked about observational marketing. Yeah. And I found, I've never heard that word before. And I was just wondering if you can explain what you mean by that. And I'll put a link in the interview in our podcast so people can watch it too, because he asked you a lot of different questions than I did. Yeah. Today. So observational marketing, um, I guess, is something that I just kind of made up. I don't have a formal That's education <laughs> in marketing. Yeah. So, yeah, there's no there's no formal education um, in marketing going on. But, you know, when I was younger, I um, I worked in pet retail. So this is where my observational marketing started. So I worked for Petco Corporation for four years. And we had display contests all the time. Mm -hmm. And the, the um, pet food reps would come in and they would coach our teams on what was most visually appealing to people and where they look. And so once we had that basic training, I started walking into grocery stores and specifically walking down like the cereal aisle. And they keep 
tricks and cocoa puffs and things like that about the height of like a seven year old <laughs> because that's what the seven year old is going to see and that's what they're right. going to want. So this kind of observational marketing has followed me into this company and I just um, I've applied all of those principles to marketing our own company. You know, I, I know what people like to see. I know how long it takes for them to hear a message. I know that you have to be super repetitive and super confident in, in delivering your message for them to understand and for them to go and also to know how to explain it in different ways because mm -hmm. often the message gets really mudded up, you know, in what you hear and what this man hears and what this woman hears might be three different things. So you've got to learn different deliveries of different messages. You have to learn what your client's learning style is, you know, whether they're a visual learner or a text learner and present the solutions to their issues in that way for that client. So those are all of my <laughs> observational marketing tips. I think that's great. I mean, I, 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 I love the name or the word wording that you're using um, too. And I think it should kind of become part of, you know, it, you know, it's something that's not spoken about very often um, and, and stuff. I think in terms of, you know, what isn't what I see happening when you're doing your own marketing, because let's face it, when you're a company, you may not have set aside budget, Terry, you know, uh, enough budget for marketing. A lot of it's left probably falls on your shoulders, certainly falls on mine. It's always the office lady or the, you know, admin or whatever, scrambling for that photo op or whatever. Um, I think that what I see when people do market or have the ability to market, whether they're paying is the lack of a call to action, right? At the end of whatever it is, your video, your brochure, your, your, whatever it is you're trying to get across is, is just asking, you know, and I catch myself too, you know, catching myself, just like, well, what's the call to action? You know, what, what do I want this person to do? when they see this X, Y, Z post or, you know, flyer or whatever. Right. Yes. So, um, a lot of sales forces have this challenge and a sales force will go out and say, I hope we do business soon. And then they shake hands and you never see each other again. <laughs> and they're like, Oh gosh, we had such a great sales meeting. I wonder why I never heard from that company again. And it, it's because there was no, there was no call to action, you know, like you yeah. say. So to give that person, you know, say, okay, I'm going to call you Monday at nine o'clock and be definitive about it and continue to establish those relationships and continue to provide your expertise mm -hmm. repeatedly to that client will allow for that relationship. It is all about relationships. So you've got to allow that relationship to blossom. You've got to allow um, your work to be able to um, showcase behind your words mm -hmm. and, you know, and take it from there. For sure. For I sure. mean, your approach to a potential client is going to be way different than mine. You know, uh, it's not just a matter of, you know, it, it's kind of more about the product you're delivering, right? Um, and your product that you're delivering is way different than what Maui Powder Works is offering, you know? Right, but you are in a unique position and you have such an opportunity to, uh, you know, Andrew's Powder Coating used to be, in, you know, in um, a building very similar to yours. and where you have I to just, go outside to change your mind. <laughs> yes, yeah. And I do see the opportunity after speaking to you offline um, over the last couple of years. I'm just, 
I'm excited for you guys. You guys have an opportunity. You guys have done all of the, the pre ground fabrication of your, of your sales and marketing program. You're doing the powder coater podcast. You're out there on LinkedIn. Yeah. You're, you're providing necessary information for our finishing industry and to have that and to have clients be comfortable with you is um, just a recipe for such great success. So of course I'm a big fan of yours and <laughs> I would love to see that happen for you guys. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. be here any time for you guys to oh, thank you. call up and get some, um, some, you know, go through your growing pains with you and, and give you advice freely. Cause I would just love to see that happen for you guys. Yeah, um, I know because you did talk about that in the interview too, is how you got to where you are today was, you know, you did have to hire consulting. And I think that there is almost like, is do you believe that there's actually, I mean, is there a lack of consultants out there? I just find that I don't see a lot of them and a lot of them are, have already don't necessarily own a business anymore. They've kind of moved on or, you know, sold their business and now they're doing this kind of work, helping others. And I think it's great, but don't you think we need some more people out there? I, this is a, this is a multifaceted question. I'm not sure if there's a lack of consulting experts out there, but I know in my case specifically, when I was in my first building and I knew that consulting was the way to go for us to grow. There was, there was no amount of money I was going to be able to put together to hire a consultant. So it left me in a very challenging position and um, <laughs> the universe works in weird ways, Kim. Doesn't it? Uh, I just manifested some help and <laughs> One day, this guy named John Trusty walked into my front door from a company called CMTC, which is the California Manufacturing and Technology Association. They're, they're a, a government-funded consulting center. And I'm like, you know, how much do I have to pay you? And he's like, nothing. We have federal tax dollars and state tax dollars to help you. And I'm like, I didn't know how far this was going to go. So I'm like, fine, be here every Monday morning at 6 a.m., which is such an impossible ask for anybody. But I wanted to see if they were for real. And um, I got to tell you, John Trusty showed up every Monday morning at 6 a.m. for me and really taught us um, a, a lot, starting with a SWOT analysis, which is yeah. just such yeah. the, the basic, basic, you know, let's let's start a, a powder coating bakery and see what happens right and yeah. uh, and we grew under their guidance and we moved under their guidance and then we moved again under their guidance and um i i, I hand a large part of our pushing to them because they did push us but they never pushed us into a corner where we would fail and we haven't failed I think that's awesome because it, you really get to see, I almost wish, and maybe you have tried to write down or journal how you went through those steps, you know, cause that would be such invaluable, um, you know, information to know to how you took those steps to get to where you are. Um, cause you know, you're, I'm here, you're there. Right. And, and I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, it's almost impossible, right? You know, but it's just because I don't understand or know your journey, your footsteps, you know, um, and stuff. And I think that that's pretty much what brought me like with the podcast. Um, I have really garnered with every interview and some kind of inner knowing or some kind of you know, uh, I don't even know how to explain it, how I, how it is that I think, but because I interview so many people, I have kind of 
formulated a new understanding of our industry. I mean, it was the onset was always to learn about it, right? If I don't know it, I want to learn about it. Like we're talking about certifications and powders today. Uh, but with all of those interviews, I have the ability to kind of understand things from new perspectives and maybe a unique perspective because of it, you know, and it, it's certainly, I certainly benefited from it, you know, which is awesome. Uh, and maybe hopefully moving forward, moving the industry forward, you know, yeah. um, why does innovation always have to be top down? That's my biggest, you know, gripe now. Um, because I'm finding out through my own experience that those big guys don't really like you to kind of poke underneath them, <laughs> you know? Well, because it's tried and true for them and they don't like to yeah. upset the apple cart because it just results in change. Right. And change is not comfortable, but change is sometimes necessary. And um, to be able to garner as as much perspective as you can just makes you a, a leader. You know, you're armed with all this knowledge and you're armed with not only people's successes, but their failures, which is mm. also a key to success because yeah. it teaches yeah. us what not to do. So if somebody starts a business and they're successful right from the bat, they don't learn what not to do. Yeah. And when they have a problem, they don't know how to handle it. So Learning what not to do has been such a valuable lesson to people like us, you know, mm. and metal finishing. We all know there's lots of mistakes that are made daily. Right. And I'm, I'm so proud that you came on today because like, it's not just that Andrews is different or has accomplished so much in this world or, you know, in the realm of powder coatings and certifications and all everything we've talked about today but you know you are a woman in powder coating <laughs> how 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 unique is that right i mean we're having a conversation uh, a, an intellectual conversation about powder coatings and um you know it's still very much a man's world out there and it and it should be but it's so it's so nice to get to know you and i would love to have more women cuz i know behind every powder coating shop there is one girl that's working there that knows yes. a thing or two about powder coating you know yes and we yeah. need to kind of have our own voice i guess so to speak you know um, we do and and seeing the industry change has been great for me because imagine um, when I got into this industry 25 years ago, wow. I mean, I had clients, again, we were servicing cars and motorcycle guys. They wouldn't even talk to me. You know, I was just the girl that answered the phone. And, um, you know, people would call, I need to speak to the owner. And I'm like, okay, how can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, that's been an interesting challenge and, um, you know, to overcome, but, but with time and, and relationship building, we've garnered those, those manly respects, if you will, yeah. it hasn't been easy. You know, this is, this is a, um, a, a woman, uh, challenge in every industry. Yeah. You right. know, I mean, I have, um, my, my mom and my sister have been, um, corporate insurance industry giants. And my mom broke the glass ceiling for women in her corporation, you know, 45 years ago. Wow. And it was just, she just, you know, I admire her so much. She just, she really laid some, some groundwork and some tough shoes for me to fill. Um, but I did it and my little sister is following in her footsteps as well. So we've, we've had a good mentor along the way. And, um, you know, women in industry have an ability to have some empathy for a, a client's problems. And 
um, to come up with a, a level-headed solution for them and to meet with a team of people that can really back that client and get them through whatever their situation is. Yeah, I mean, I getting back to the phone call or whatever, I'm like, you know, I may not be the owner or whatever, but you're going to have to get through me to even talk to the owner, <laughs> you know. Uh, let me answer all of your questions first, and we'll see <laughs> if you can even talk to them. You're right. Right. <laughs> you have to meet my qualifications first. Yeah. Um, and it always ends with, my gosh, thank you so much for, you know, answering the questions that I had. And they don't even want to talk to him because right. I, I pretty much answered all those questions, you know, and right. then, um, you know, but, um, you know, I think it does take. Um, you know, like you said, your mom pushing those boundaries in her own, um, world, you know, work world to, to kind of sh shine an example for you to, to, to be bold, right. And not in, and, and to learn more, um, you know, it, it's easy when you're, sometimes it's easy. I don't know, maybe it's more difficult, but like when you're the entrepreneur, I mean, it, that it the sh it all rides on your shoulders too. You're not just a, pay, a, a paid employee collecting a paycheck too, right? So it just you know, and I think that that really what it amounts to is just you know, yeah, we share our story. You're sharing yours, and um, we it's not like we made these big leaps in one day. You know, we stair stepped or baby stepped our way there. Um, and stuff. And I, I agree with your observational marketing, um, you know, because that's how I got proficient on all of these social media platforms enough to where we were making a difference. Now, the problem there in lies, you know, when, you know, Meta's got the gun, uh, the, the algorithm gun and can change its direction anywhere and any place it wants to, well, then you're at the will and the whim of that, right? Uh, whether they're going to support your, your uh, Facebook business page or today and tomorrow they will not, you know, or whatever, yeah. you know, so you, you're still at the whim and will of these other, in terms of the easier organic marketing and stuff, you know, and you, you always have the option of, of uh, paying for advertising, but sometimes I feel like I, I have not ever, and I don't know if you do, because I've never asked anybody else, but, you know, have you ever paid for marketing? Like, we have not. Yeah. Um, the only thing I did, I don't want to say we never have paid for marketing. Back 20 years ago, we did pay for Google AdWords when Google AdWords first came out. Yeah. And it was like the beginning of SEO. And so we were able to capture some industry keywords and put them in the AdWords um, platform, if you will. Yeah. And, and our website would show up. Yeah. But I think AdWords is now, um, you know, it, it's a past product. I don't think it really does anything anymore, although I'm unsure about that. And, yeah, and uh, so there's other ways. Yeah, we stopped speaking. using that platform. Uh, most social media we have stopped, actually. So we're not on the meta platform anymore. Um, I just have a, a message on there asking all of our Facebook followers to please come over to LinkedIn now. Yeah. Um, just because we we disagree with the algorithm. I mean, there's when you work so hard for something and they can just switch it overnight to to something else that you don't understand. Um, that was one aspect, but the other aspect is there's so much hacking going on on that mm -hmm. platform right now. And Facebook is doing nothing to help their customers. No, I know it's an annoyance stuff. beyond annoyance to have all these yeah spammers out there just taking advantage of it. I mean, it, yeah, but I'm I'm so thrilled because I and we're going to show your app your, your Andrew's powder coating 
website. Uh, but um, I do want to share, share this with everybody today because, you know, I, I just love this directory and you, you did, we're getting, we're gaining more users and stuff like that uh, since you put up your, uh, took advantage of uh, putting up your um, uh, little page here on our directory site and stuff that I really, you did such an exceptional A++ uh, because I want to show, you know, how powder coders can easily just take advantage of, of, you know, something like a tool like this that can actually help you with the SEO because you still need a valuable backlink to something when you're, you've got your website up, you know, and the more we can graft up together, um, the greater it or the easier it is for the Google bots to find you and validate and verify who you are, you know? Yes. Um, I appreciate you putting this together as well. Yeah. But you did, you girl, you, when you, you check all the boxes when you do something. So I admire that. I do too. And I really want to showcase your page on the website because it made it so easy for me to verify who you were because on the back end, you know, you submit this uh, to the, you know, you submit your directory, your page, and then I have to approve it. And you had everything kind of pretty much already there for me. Um ready to go. So it was easy for me to uh, really just dive into uh, approving you right away. And then I want to share, you know, so I shared your page on the directory in Facebook, which gives you a geo uh, link um, because it's a geo post saying that uh, powder, the powder coding directory is in uh, Los Angeles, California, and it's with Andrew's powder coding, right? So there's that, that's a valuable link too, as well. A lot of people don't see that, but, uh, this is an exceptional site. I really didn't have to do much to, um, to put, you know, and you don't even have to put as much as what Sandy did here on your page, but you know, they do have a lot of certifications. I think that's just as validating to have all of that, um, and stuff. And where did the, oh yeah, over here, you put a video and you put your, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah. It could be an interview featuring the owner where it, you know, it could be a small YouTube video. The main thing is it has to be on video. I think we can do VMO vent. What is it? Uh, bit, uh, that other oh, pop, Vimeo? Right? Vimeo, Vimeo. Uh -huh. uh, but I just, you know, I have one myself and I just used a promotional video of what we do, you know, some services we provide or whatever. I just had it out there. So it's just easy to pop it in there. You don't have to have a video, but I just wanted to show this because, you know, a lot of people don't realize that we actually have a video thing. So you can, you know, and people, the more, the more people can, you can wow them with visual stuff, the more they're going to stay on this page and read and introduce you, you know, introduce you to who you are, right? Yes. So this is awesome. Thank you for joining us on the directory Thank and you, showcasing Jeff. everything. Yeah, it's great. So let's pop over to your, um, let's pop over to your uh, Andrew's page to showcase because you've spent so much time with me and I want just people to know who you are and to pay attention to who you are. Uh, because you are a leader in the industry and, um, this showcases all of your certifications or at least some of them. And, and you um, can click right on the AS9100 button right there and oh, yeah. certificate will show up. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. It's official. It is official. <laughs> wow. So that's good for. Um, I don't know if it did it show up when I clicked on it. I might have it to. It did, which is interesting. It just shows. Oh, okay. a, I think it's a PDF, but um, here you know. I can. Oh, there it's, it is. There, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a streamyard thing, so I just have to share that tab. Okay. So there you go. There's the signature and everything to make it all official, so that 
you know, they, their clients get that reassurance that they're, you know, you're giving them, um, you know, what you're doing is you're, you're giving them the, that reassurance right off the bat because people have busy lives. These people that are specifying and um, having to do all this are really just looking for um, instant gratification, I guess, or instant, instant answers without yeah. having to go and call and, you know, it just simplifies a lot. So I, I always admire people that can kind of get ahead of the customer in their mind and what they're really looking for on their website, uh, you know, and how they can find it easily, right? You wouldn't know to click on that, but if somebody did, they would get right into what it is that they're getting. Correct. That's yeah. awesome. And it's just clean, clean website. Yes. And it's also formatted so that, um, you know, you can easily look at it on a yeah. cell phone. Yeah. So a lot of websites um, have not been formatted that way. And I want to stress to other. Oh, yeah, definitely. Other yeah. business owners everywhere, you know, not just metal finishing professionals, but. Um, the lion's share of our website hits come from mobile devices, which is mm -hmm. um, interesting to know. And it's an interesting stat to share. So I'd like to, yeah. you know, make sure everybody that is advertising on the Internet to make it cell phone friendly. Because that's where people are finding you. Yeah. I mean, that kind of happened, what, in the late teens. So. I want to say 17, 18, 19, they were really pushing the mobile, the mobile stuff. Now I have it on the, uh, Google analytics. Now they've switched to the G4 analytics. So hopefully you've done that already. I'm sure you have. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, although it still says I need to do something on there, but I know that I did it because I took a, a, a simple course through Danielle Miller. She, uh, she's been inspirational and very exemplary for me to follow. And we've had her on the show. Lots of, in fact, I actually have listeners on the show asking me when she's going to come back because she's just so informative. Um, but, uh, she, She's the one that kind of helped me navigate and switching over and stuff like that. Of course, I only have like five sites. No, no biggie. No biggie. <laughs> I only have five sites to manage. <laughs> I swear to God, sometimes I just, you know, I have to put the spear in the foot, you know, just <laughs> now I have to control it all. And it's like, ah, crazy. Yeah, you have a monster on your hand. I don't know I how do. you do it. <laughs> A lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But we're seeing progress in what we're trying to accomplish and, and stuff. So I'm, like I said, I'm so, you know, grateful for you and your <laughs> husband. I got to mention your husband, Scott, too, because he is very dynamic in and of himself. Uh, you know, in, in just talking to him over the phone briefly about what you guys do. Uh, this was months and months ago, but... You know, um, you guys are both equally strong and maybe you guys can come back on the show as a couple because I, I don't know how many couples run their own business because it seems like sometimes the wife does something else and how you manage that in itself, you know, and you don't drive each other crazy. But you see that door there? That is my saving grace right there yeah. because our yeah. other shop didn't have that and he would be yelling at me all the time. <laughs> but the door helps. And now I have my space that I control and I talk to customers and do all that stuff. And, you know, if he needs to get involved, he will. Right. But yeah. Yes. It, so I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna to clear up a, a really weird industry um, um, rumor right now. And Scott and I are, are not married. Oh, really? And Yeah. Um, in fact, we're both engaged to other people right now and, uh, it's okay. We did used to be married. So but that's even uh, more extraordinary. Yeah. Yep. So we are business partners. We continue to run our company together. Um, we obviously have the same goals and, and dreams and, um, we're still, um, 
very dedicated to the progression of this company and where it's going. You guys but, have uh, incredible <laughs> nerves of steel. I even love you guys now even more. <laughs> yeah. Because how many, how many people listening to this show right now are going through, you know, tenuous times? I mean, you know, it's been trying for us because of the accident and the the recovery and I almost feel like there's a bit of fallout now because we just charged right through that accident when instead of taking the time to really kind of process what had happened to us, <laughs> you know, you know, and now there's a bit of a fallout from it because now, you know, almost now going to be two years in May yeah. and we just charged right through it, not thinking, cause that's Kim and Ross. That's what we do. We just charge through like, a rhinoceros through things, you know, and, um, it's not easy to do. And it, you know, there is a, 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 a mental health, uh, level to it. Right. You know, so, uh, not just from the day to day in terms of either having a partner or, or becoming a business partner, you know, there are so many aspects to this business that we haven't even touched on that we could go into, you know, and stuff. Yep. So I congratulate you guys for s sticking together through that. And in that sense, you know, um, so that that's very challenging. I mean, one more challenge you guys have a, you know, what haven't you done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. My so goodness. Have, you know, it's just like parents that have kids to raise together. So yeah. that's what it, that's what we equate our relationship to. We still have a team of people that, um, are very loyal to us and very um, dependent on us still being able to cohesively work together and get projects yeah. finished. Right. So, <laughs> My and, goodness. And I, 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 do, I do know the challenges associated with the door and the wall. And, you know, when Scott and I were in a smaller building, um, we had all those same challenges. And um, I had a, a very special mentor of mine who um, owned a business with his wife too. And he sat me down on several occasions and did quite frankly tell me that I was going to have to either choose between my marriage and my business. And um, yeah, there was, there was no, no word barred about that. He was just very straight up about it. And of course I was very young when, when he went into all of this and, after growing a little bit, I was like, God, Marv was so smart. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was right also, you know, I mean, I had right. to, in our second building, Scott and I shared a giant office and I experienced some of the same challenges that you just went through. And I had a contractor come in and build a wall down the middle of our office and split our office in two because it, it, it was um, challenging. Yeah. I mean... I think it's just, um, I don't know. I, it, it, really, a show needs to be done on it. I don't know. <laughs> just, it, it, I guess, and that was, you know, I didn't, we've always worked together, though. You know, like, I guess we were just young and dumb, and Ross's parents did it, so why couldn't we, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, you know, it, again, it has a unique, a set of problems to solve rather than, but I know talking to a lot of friends and stuff like, how do you work with your husband? I could barely, you know, I don't think I could do that. And then I realized, oh, wow, that is kind of different, you know, and unique yeah. um, and stuff. But, uh, but anyways, it's been such a pleasure. I think we've talked it all out. I think we have. I, I very much appreciate um, being on this episode. And um, again, thank you for inviting me. And I had a good time and uh, appreciate the entire conversation, Kim, truly. Thank you so much. Well, like I said, we look up to you as leaders. I do, uh, especially. And, you know, we're continuously uncovering gaps in the market, in the industry. Uh, we just discovered that we could easily get into marriage counseling for powder coaters. For exactly. Sure. <laughs> I'm a pro at it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> we just came up with another business. That's, that's website this. number six for you. Okay. <laughs> no more. 
<laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to like bring it down to a finite uh, thing, but yeah, I do have fun with it. And, you know, Ross doesn't get it. He's like, why are you doing this to yourself? And I'm like, but I love it. I love yeah. the tech and I love challenging myself. We're going to, you know, uh, well, by the time this is recorded, we'll have already either failed or done really well with the live custom coder forum. So please pray for us. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, you know, just there's so much to fill, fulfill um, in this industry. So why not? Right. And it, I think that you guys certainly have done that as well. Yes. Thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing you in late June as well. Yes, we are definitely going to do it for sure. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, please do like, share and subscribe. I always forget to say that and uh, have a beautiful day. Aloha. Thank you.